Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 102. Day day 3102 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition third edition third edition day 102 we are discussing the topic of probability something that we started yesterday yesterday we talked about what it means for the two events to be mutually exclusive we talk, we discussed the notion of mutual exclusivity and today we'll talk about independence what does it mean for two events to be independent but if two events are independent, let's call, let's call these events E and F, we're going to give them the two events name, two events E and F in this case are said to be independent if the two events are said to be independent if the odds of one happening or not happening, if the odds of one event happening or not happening has absolutely no impact, has absolutely no impact on the odds of the other one happening or no, not happening. The probability that the second event will happen or not happen, I'll stop saying not happen from now on because it's annoying. The odds of a second event happening, if that the odds of second event happening has absolutely no bearing, ha, is not influenced by whether or not the first event took place, it doesn't matter whether the first event took place or not, then in that case the two events are said to be independent because they have nothing to do with each other, they are independent. The probability does not depend on the other. Do you understand? Before we get going, and this is important that you have watched yesterday's video, because there, we, as I said a little while ago, we discussed the notion of mutual exclusivity. It was a long video. I understand that it was a half, hour, half an hour long video, but in that in that kind of video, we discussed the notion of mutual exclusivity, and there we mentioned the fact that in the context, at least at least in the context of GRE, because as I said yesterday, in the GRE, the concept that they test on probabilities are very simple, very elementary, so we don't have to make it too complicated. So in the, at least in the context of GRE, when we talk about mutual exclusivity, there we're talking about, there also we talked about two events, but we were rolling the dice only once. Think of it in terms of rolling a dice, keep it simple for the time being. We were rolling the dice only once. Here, here, when we talk about Two events here, two events, two events means here when we talk about independence, here two events means roll roll the dice twice. These two events are not happening at the same time. Mutual exclusivity mutual exclusivity is uh, where we talk about what are the odds that the two events will happen at the same time simultaneously. If that is possible, then we say the two events are not mutually exclusive. If, some, if that is something that is not possible, it is not possible for the two events to happen at the same time, then we say they are mutually exclusive. Mutual independence is something different. Two events are said to be mutually independent if the odds of one happening or not happening has absolutely no impact on the odds of other one happening. But here, the two events means two distinct events. We're not talking about two events happening at the same time simultaneously. That's not what we're talking about here. So here, when we talk about two events, we're talking about rolling the dice twice. Do you understand? For example, for example, let's define event E. Event E, let's define it as rolling a four. And let's define event F as rolling a five. What are the odds that the event E will happen? What are the odds that event E will happen? What are the odds that I will roll a 4? What are the odds that I will roll a 4? Well, it's 1 out of 6. So I roll the dice once, and I'm asking myself, what are the odds that I will roll a 4? It's 1 out of 6. Then I pick up the dice and I roll it the second time. Here the two events means actually physically rolling the dice twice. Here, in the second time when I roll the dice, I'm asking myself, we are asking ourselves, what are the odds that we'll roll a 5? Answer again is 1 out of 6. Why is it 1 out of 6? Because, because the dice has no memory. Dice has no memory. It doesn't care what happened the first time. The dice doesn't care whether you roll a 4 or a 5 or a 2 or a 1 the first time. The odds of you rolling a 
5 in the second roll is 1 out of 6. It doesn't matter. Even if you roll that 5 in the first roll, you, the odds of rolling a 5 in the second roll is still 1 out of 6. The odds of one event has absolutely no impact on the odds of the other event and therefore these two events are independent. Therefore, these two events are independent. And if that's the case, if that's the case, then the odds that the odds that they both happen are that, that they both happen, probability that they both happen, and in this context this is how we'll write it. Probability of event E being rolling a 4, probability of event F being rolling a 5, therefore that they both happen, we write it as the ordered pair. A 4 and a 5. Let's, let's put this on the top so we can we can understand what what this means in English language. So we write it like this: four and a five is an ordered pair. And what this what is what this is saying what this is saying is what are the odds? What are the odds that I will get a four? on the first roll and a 5 on the second roll. That's what this means. And this is how we write it. What are the odds that I'll get a 4 on the first roll and 5 on the second roll? Getting a 4 on, four on the first roll is what we're defining here as event E and getting a 5 on the second roll. The second, second roll, the second event is what we're calling event E. And what are the odds that they will both happen? Well, it's simply the product of the two. What are the odds of rolling, rolling the first event, or getting the first event, and what are the odds of the second event? The product of the two equals the odds that they will both happen. And that is only true if the events are independent. And here they are. Because rolling a four on the first roll has absolutely no impact whatsoever of what we get on the second row. And therefore, the odds that they will both happen is simply the product of the two odds. In this case here, it's just one out of six times one out of six. And therefore, what are the odds that I'll roll a four on the first row and five on the second row? The answer is, is one out of 36. The possibility is only one out of 36. But here, the outcomes are ordered pairs. Here, here, the outcomes, are ordered pairs. They are ordered pairs because, one more time, because two events here being two events physically. Physically, the dice is being rolled twice, which was not the case when we are talking about mutual exclusivity, because in the mutual exclusivity, we are talking about two events happening at the same time, in the same roll. Only one rolled it once, we rolled the dice only once yesterday and we ask ourselves what are the odds that both of the events will happen at the same time and therefore we are rolling the dice only once. But here because we are rolling, rolling the dice twice, therefore the favorable outcomes is written as ordered pair. Do you understand? Let's do one more. Let's do a few more as a matter of fact. Let's do a few more. Quick examples. So we're gonna let's toss a coin. Let's toss a coin. What are the odds that I'll get a head on the first first toss and head on the second toss? What I'm gonna roll the dice twice and what are the odds that I get head heads on both the both the tosses? The odds of getting the first odds of getting odds of getting a head on the first roll. First, I keep calling it roll, but you don't understand what I meant by roll. I'm, by roll, I meant a, a toss. The odds of getting a head on the first toss is one out of half, one out of two. And odds of getting the head on the second roll is also, second uh, toss is also one out of two. It's just one out of four. It's just one out of four, which by the way is the same as the odds of getting a tail on the first time and a tail on the second time. Which is same as getting the tail on the first time or head on the second time. Which is the same as getting the Head on the first time, first first toss, or and a tail on the second second time, because they have no memories. The coin has no memory. It does not care what you got the first time. It is not influenced by that. The probability of a second event is in no way impacted by the odds, the likelihood of the first event. 
they are two completely independent events. Let's roll the dice, let's toss a coin, let's, let's toss a coin ten times. What are the odds that we get head on all ten times? What are the odds that we get all heads? Well, it's simply rolling a, getting a head on the first roll is one out of half, rolling a head on, on the second toss is one out of half, rolling a head on the second to third toss is one out of half, one, one out of two, and so on and so forth. I keep calling it one out of half, but you understand what I meant by that. One out of two is what I meant by that, and so on and so forth, ten times. And therefore, the odds that we'll get all heads on a ten on ten tosses is simply one half raised to ten. Simply one half raised to ten, which is same as the odds of getting all tails. Or any other combination if you like. We can talk about heads and tail alternative or alternately or we can talk about any combination. It's the same. Let's do one more. So here we'll pick two cards. Pick two cards out of out of a deck of card. Here things are going to get a little bit complicated. Do you understand? Pay attention here. The condition here is that condition here is that it has to be with ta, uh, it has to be rather I almost it has to be the condition here is that it has to be with replacement. That's the condition. Whatever, we're going to pick one card, we're going to see what it is, and we're going to put it back in the deck. Because if we don't put it back in the deck, the events are no longer independent. Because what happens in the second event will be influenced by what happened on the first event, because whatever you took out, you're not putting it back. So if you don't put it back, then it will impact the probability of the second event. And the two events will no longer be independent. Here, if you replace the card, you, we're going to take out one card from the deck, we're going to see what it is, and we're going to put it back, in which case, the odds of what happens in the second event has absolutely no impact on what happened in the first event and, and the two events will become independent. Excuse me for a second. So, what are the odds that, uh, what are the odds that we put an ace on the first event and uh, a three on, on the second event, three of any suits? Well, how many S's do we have? We have four S's out of possible 52. So that's that's the odds of that event. And we pick a card, we and then we look at what it is and put it back in there, and then we're asking what are the odds that we'll pick a three? Well there are again four threes because there are four suits. So it's just 16 out of whatever this amount happens to be. We're not gonna worry about simplifying it, it's 16 out of 52 squared. Of course we can simplify, reduce it, but that's what it is. And in that case, the two events are said to be independent if we put it back. Let's look at one more. We have two people A and B, person A and person B are going to work on a problem, on a problem. And again we have to be told or the nature of the problem has to be such that it makes it very clear without any ambiguity, without any doubt that it is that these are in, in fact independent events. And if it's not very clear, they have to say it. Here they're going to say it. Person A and person B are going to work on the problem independently. I hope I hope I spell it correctly. The probability that A will succeed, the odds that A will succeed, we are told, is 30%. The probability that B will succeed, the odds that B will succeed, we are told that it is 70%. Question is, what are the odds that they will both succeed? What are the odds that they will both succeed 
in solving this problem and working out what it is given the fact that we are told that they are independent they are working independently they are working independently because the odds of uh, how successful the second one is going to be has absolutely nothing to do with how the first one is going to perform and vice versa in other words two people are going to start working on the problem as soon as the first person solves the problem either one of the two two pro people who solves the problem first as soon as that happens we're not, we're not going to tell at that point at that point we're not going to tell the other person to stop because it's already been solved we're not going to do that they are working independently they have absolutely nothing to do with each other sitting in two separate rooms solving this problem whatever the problem happens to be from experience from their experience these people have been working with us in our firm for a long time and we know how much they know and we sort of estimate that but Albert has about 30% chance, 3 out of 10 chance that he'll, he'll, he'll crack the problem and Betty has 70% chance. What are the odds that both Betty and Albert will succeed at solving the problem? Well, it's very simple. It's the product of the two. Product, pro, product of the two odds. The odds that A will succeed times the odds that B will succeed. The odds that A will succeed is just 3 out of 10. And the odds that B will succeed is 7 out of 10. And therefore, it is 21 out of 100 or 21% chance. There is a 21% chance that they will both succeed. Even though B by himself, by herself in this case, I call, I call the person Betty. So B in this case, Betty actually has a 70% chance of solving the problem by herself. The first person has a 30% chance, but the odds that they will both succeed is actually quite low. It's only 21%, as you can see here. They both have to succeed. We're going to stop here and then tomorrow we're going to start solving the problems from the book and, uh, and make some progress. Do you understand? See you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.